Hey everyone, Rayo here, and today we're going to be comparing the brand new Tier 95 Melee set, the Vestments of Havoc, and Custom Fit Trim Masterwork, discuss the pros and cons of each, and go over all the information I've gathered to help you make an educated decision on which set is better suited for your needs. I'll also include some boss examples to show the difference of each set, so if you'd like to skip to that, you can find the timestamps in the video description. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, and follow me over on Twitch. A link to my Twitch, Discord, and other playlists on this channel can be found in the video description. But without further ado, let's get into it. If you've been following my Maxing Melee series, you'll see that I've used Trim Masterwork extensively, and ever since the vestments came out with Zamorak, I've been using those non-stop. To cut to the chase, my TLDR of this video is that the Havoc set is not a required upgrade unless you're deciding to chase faster boss PRs, DPS and group content, or hybrid. Trim Masterwork was and still is more than viable at all bosses. All the bosses that were previously possible with Trim Masterwork prior to Zamorak's release didn't suddenly invalidate the set. It simply created a more focused use for it. I also want to clarify that I use the term required loosely. I don't mean to imply that you're not allowed to do group content or go for better boss times with Trim Masterwork. I'm just saying that if those are your goals, then the Havoc set should 100% be in your sights for upgrades. Now, let's move on to the pros and cons of each set. Let's start off with Trim Masterwork. Starting off with the pros list, the defensive set effect makes it so you can take up to 50% initial reduced damage. It is not 50% damage reduction, it simply takes 100% of the damage, 50% will be dealt immediately while the other 50% will be dealt over time. And I say up to 50% because it is 10% damage reduction per piece and there are 5 pieces per the set, but you need a minimum of 3 pieces to benefit from this passive. Moving on to my next point, the passive works with only 3 pieces, which allows you to use the Gloves of Passage, Cinder Banes, and the Jaws of the Abyss, while still benefiting from the overall set passive. You won't benefit from 50% damage delay, but it'll be 30% in this case, which is still a lot. With that set effect, it makes learning bosses quite a bit easier than any other melee DPS set. Other things is that it is a tier 92 DPS set, it's affordable, it's made through the mining and smithing rework, and most of that, if you decide to do it on your own, is AFK work. Once you have the full set, you are able to custom fit the full set, which makes it so you have double the charge, which in turn makes it drain all the way to 0% a lot slower. On top of that, if you custom fit it, it won't degrade on your Reaper and your Slayer assignments. Moving on to the cons list, the set effect is a defensive set. I only slightly consider this a con solely due to the fact that it makes a DPS focused armor set a mix of DPS and tank as opposed to full DPS. The set effect requires 3 pieces minimum. This really only became a con when the Jaws of the Abyss helmet came out due to making the boots required to have 3 pieces for the passive effect. This made laceration boots another switch. And lastly, the adrenaline is capped at a base of 100 not including relic powers. This wouldn't really be a point if we weren't comparing this to the Vestments of Havoc, but alas, here we are. Now to move on to the Vestments of Havoc. Starting off with the pros once again, it is a tier 95 DPS set with tier 100 damage. It has multiple DPS focused set effects including adrenaline regeneration, increased berserk duration, and 20% max adrenaline increase. The increased zerk duration will obviously increase your damage up time, but that increased duration allows you enough time to get another hurricane or destroy within your zerk, essentially. The set is farmable on lower in rages of Zamorak. I'm not implying that Zamorak is an easier boss, but the drops aren't incredibly rare from what we've seen. And it's also not locked by a ridiculous enrage percent, so it's a fairly realistic option. Overpower, a very high damage ultimate, is completely usable in your rotation. With helm switching, adrenaline uptime is very high. In some scenarios, it removes the need for an adrenaline potion. And lastly, the base gear is non-degradable. The cons to this set is that even though it is a tier 95 DPS set, the defensive rating equates to a tier 75 set, making this set last cannon. This makes your Berserk hurt a lot more than it would in Trim Masterwork. At the time of this video, the set is fairly expensive, so if you are planning for some other melee upgrades, this is going to be a little bit later on your list. The set effect requires 4 pieces, making the helm another switch for optimal gameplay. This one's slightly a con, but it is that it changes your rotation quite a bit. It isn't simply equipping the vestments and doing more damage. Your berserk rotation has a different rotation, so it's another learning curve once you get this set. Lastly, you can't swap off the fourth piece and retain the 20% adrenaline bonus. It must be used before swapping to the Jaws of the Abyss, or whatever your other fourth piece swap is. 
All in all, I feel that the pros and cons of each are all justified for the most part, as I don't believe any one set should be absolutely perfect at everything. The vestments release really created a more niche use of trim masterwork, with the vestments taking over the DPS focused situations of trim masterwork, and not only taking them over, but making them better if used correctly. In my experience, I found the trim masterwork set to be the ideal set for learning bosses, tanking, and just comfortably farming content. The other benefit of low upkeep costs of trim masterwork is great for saving supply costs in terms of repairs and potential non-deaths due to its tankiness. On the other hand, the Vestments of Havoc provide you with the absolute best damage output when it comes to melee. A defensive downside can come into play when you're learning a boss, struggle to consistently juggle mechanics at a boss, or have to deal with high hitting typeless damage such as pads at Solak or Zamorak's Chaos Blast or Infernal Tomb mechanic. That being said, if you can no food encounters with melee or eat minimal food, investments will only make your DPS potential go higher. One of the major pros of the vestment set is, aside from the damage, the rotation feels a lot more fluid and free due to the amount of adrenaline retained from the two-piece set effect, as well as the Jaws of the Abyss when swapping. Overpower has a very regular use when using the Havoc set, whereas with Trim Masterwork, it can ruin a rotation if used incorrectly. Now that we've discussed the pros and cons of each set, let's do a couple of example kills between a few bosses and see how they fare against each other. Just a disclaimer, there are not going to be perfect kills because my kills are slightly inconsistent here and there, but they'll be generally decent enough. I'll take the best takes of what I can get for each boss, essentially. I'll be using the most ideal loadouts for each set. For Trim Masterwork, this is Gloves of Passage, Jaws of the Abyss, and the Trim Masterwork Chest, Legs, and Boots. As for Vestments, this is all four pieces with Gloves of Passage and a Jaws of the Abyss helmet swap. All other gear like the weapons and perks will all be the same. So with Masterwork, I start off with a Zerk, Barge, Smoke Cloud, and then I will bleed Destroy, Hurricane, and then I will use a Limitless Assault, and then I have to build up with a couple of basics, which I will follow with a D-Claw spec because my Limitless ran out, so I couldn't do a Greater Flurry. So my rotation kind of fell off a little bit. In this case, I think I may have used Limitless a little bit too soon, but essentially this is how most kills end up going. Now with the Vestments kill, this one is a little bit different, so I start off as usual with the Zerk, Barge, Smoke Cloud, and then I will release on Destroy, Hurricane, and I'll go into Overpower, follow up with Assault, and then I'll go into Greater Flurry after I use Limitless here. Then after this, it's just a matter of using a basic or so, and then Vindy is done. So for my Trim Masterwork Raksha kill, I start off with a Zerk, a Pot, Arge, and then I'll go into a Smoke Cloud. I will release with Assault, Basic, Hurricane, do another Basic, go into Destroy, and then I will Basic and Escape at about 670,000 health, Chaos Order, Easy K, and just go into a full bleed rotation. Ended up getting a Relentless proc here, so that helped a lot. So that allowed me to do pretty much an instant slaughter and a Tendrils, which is pretty lucky. As that makes the damage during the Rockfall phase very, very strong. So here I do a Flanking Switch, Overpower, finish with a couple of Thresholds. And I'm essentially just going between building Adrenaline and just going off on my Threshold so I can skip the Mind Crush mechanic. So I skip the Mind Crush mechanic and then essentially just doing some basics, flank, uh, bleeds, and then I will do a slaughter because I'm going to be doing pulls and Raksha is going to be walking around during pulls. So this will help get up the damage while I am uh, surging around. I'll get enough adrenaline for a Zerk rotation so I can Zerk and then barge back onto Raksha. This is where I will do a basic and a... Limitless, Lead Assault, Hurricane, and Destroy, and essentially just try and skip the next mechanic. Now 7k off, I was really really close, um, there's not really much else that I could have done there except for start a Zerk a little bit sooner, but that would have required more adrenaline. But I phased into phase four at about 150. 
Here I'll start off with a barge. I will bleed assault. Hurricane. Destroy. Then I'll go into an overpower. And here I'm going to start building up adrenaline so I can go into a chaos or easy K. Now I'm just going to be stacking bleeds for two reasons, because I want the bleed damage from the easy K to build up, and I also want to instantly get rid of the shield. This will allow me to go into a Zerk rotation, Anima, Barge, Release Assault, Escape Away. Now I'm essentially just doing thresholds and finishing off the kill. For vestment structure, I do a little bit different of a rotation. So I'll start off the same Zerk, A Pot, Arge, Smoke Cloud. I'll release with Destroy, Hurricane, Assault, Full Channel Assault. And then I will Full Channel Greater Flurry. And I'm going to be phasing Raksha, or I'm going to be surging away from Raksha at about 650k. Go into a Chaos or Easy K rotation. And then I don't have enough time to build up to Slaughter and Walk because by the second or third auto, most of the times it's the second, I phase into the next phase, but I start off the same here. Blank, I will Disruption Shield, Overpower, a couple of basics, and then just go into all of my thresholds. So here I have to do a little bit more damage because I don't have as much bleed damage as I would during the Trim Master Rotation. So I end up missing the skip, but I use this chance to just build up adrenaline, get myself in position for a flank, get a couple more bleeds and basics off, and then I'll go and use an overpower, and then I will start to do the pulls. I'll go back into a Zerk rotation, just like I did in my previous kill. Except here, I am able to get the skip by the time he is finished with the mechanic, so I phase into phase 4 at about 133, 134. And this is without skipping the phase 2 mechanic. So I start off the same here. I will barge, smoke cloud, basic, and then I'll release on Greater Flurry because that is what I had available for a bleed. Then I'll do Overpower and go into an Easy K rotation. Build up those bleeds, that way I have some bleeds to build Adrenaline off of. And start off with a really strong burst after we gather Anima. Here I have enough Adrenaline to actually do the Lang spec. And then I will Zerk. Anima, Apot, Barge, Disruption Shield, Freedom, and then I actually missed the Barge, unfortunately, that tends to happen a lot, but either way, go into Thresholds, Overpower, and I am able to finish the kill in still a shorter amount of time. And that's all I have for you today, guys. I really hope today's video comparing both the Trim Masterwork and the Tier 95 Vestments of Havoc set could help you see the differences and decide whether or not the Vestments or the Trim Masterwork set are your sort of upgrade. If you'd like to see any of this gear in action, make sure to check out my Maxing Melee series, where I focus on upgrading the best in slot melee gear, learn every single boss, and get as good as I possibly can with the melee style. The link to that and the range variant of this series is in the video description, along with links to my Discord and Twitch channel. Lastly, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and drop a comment down below to let me know if I missed something or if you would like to just share your opinion. Thank you for watching, I'm Rayo, and I'll see you next time. Take care.